Hello everybody, it's me Julian, and today I would like to provide you with a basic introduction to what is arguably Slavoj Žižek's most difficult idea, namely less than nothing. And I've really been racking my brain to think about how to best explain this, and I think I have a way of introducing it, but I warn you that it is nevertheless somewhat technical. Žižek's less than nothing could be characterized as an attempt to use the logic of the Lacanian objet A to stage a materialist rereading of the Hegelian dialectic, which is to say, he characterizes less than nothing as the negation of negation by which the subject becomes the inverted objet A of or to the void. But by itself, that's quite difficult to understand. And so what I'd like to do here is to essentially introduce you to what you might call the four ontologies of Zizek's argument. We have Zizek's own ontology, we have Hegel's ontology, the Lacanian ontology, and the materialist ontology. Zizek's ontology is that every universal, including the void, is marked by a fundamental antagonism which appears to undermine it, and yet which nevertheless completes it. The Hegelian ontology is that the fall retroactively generates that from which it is falling. The Lacanian ontology is loss as its own object, which is also the logic of the objet a, or the transition from desire to drive, or from loss to lack. And the materialist ontology is nothing counted as something, the process by which we give body to the void. In fact, Zizek likes to use a, a pretty easy example of the materialist ontology. He says, consider the difference between entering into an American building and a European building. When you enter into the European building, you are on the ground floor and you go upstairs to reach the first floor. Whereas in an American building, the ground floor is the first floor. And Zizek says that the American building therefore illustrates the logic of materialism, which is nothing counted as something. Which say, the idealist goal is to pierce the veil of appearances, to be reunited with the primordial foundation, essence, substance, void, from which everything in the world derives. Whereas the materialist problematization is to say that even this void has to be counted as something. In fact, Zizek puts it quite poetically in the concluding paragraph to Absolute Recoil, where he writes, the idealist believes that there is peace in the void, whereas the materialist knows that even in the void, there can be no peace. Once again, we're back at Zizek's ontology, which is to say that every universal, including the void, is marked by a fundamental antagonism or difference. The idealist proposition is, therefore, that the void is the place in which all set antagonisms or differences are reconciled. Whereas the materialist position, which is therefore also Zizek's own, is that antagonism and difference is precisely what structures the void, that which appears to undermine it but also complete it. Now we're actually back at the Lacanian objet A. Here's a basic definition of the objet A. Loss as its own object, the transition from desire to drive. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're playing a video game. The aim, uh, the goal of your video game is to beat the final boss, to complete the game. But you'll be sad when it's over. And so secretly, the underlying aim is to never beat the game, to keep on playing it, to sustain your enjoyment. This means that the object of desire, the elusive goal of beating the game, is held up in a space where it can't be obtained so as to allow you to keep on enjoying the process of not obtaining it. Here we have the transition from desire to drive. Your desire to beat the game is supplemented or substituted by your drive to enjoy never beating it. And Zizek says that you can use the same mechanism to make an argument about idealism. Idealists claim to want to transcend the world of appearances, to essentially beat the final boss of Kantian transcendentalism so as to be reunited with the ideal, with essence or void, where there is peace. And yet, secretly, this can only be staged 
against the backdrop of its own impossibility, which is to say, the process by which the ideal goes from the object of desire to the object of its own loss, namely lack. And so the secret truth, the underlying aim of the Kantian transcendental proposition is in fact the Hegelian one, Hegel's ontology, namely that which falls retroactively create that from which it is falling. The ideal notion of essence, which is supposedly rendered impossible by subjective reason, only appears retroactively through said fall into subjective reason. And now we're already at the formula of the negation of negation. In other words, a tale of two voids or essences. Pure pre-ontological void or essence versus the concept of said pure pre-ontological void or essence, namely nothing. The negation of void into nothing happens only against the backdrop of subjective reason which posits it. Therefore, the subject is the negation of the negation of the pure pre-ontological void. This means that the subject mirrors and completes or mirrors and is to the void what the objet a is to the subject. Hence why Zizek says that the subject is the inverted objet a to the void, or as Zizek likes to characterize it, the subject is the operator of the void's negation of negation. Substitute the word void with essence, and you can see how the process by which essence becomes essence only through an inappearance has to be facilitated by subjective reason, i.e. by the subject. Which leads me to conclude that Slavoj Žižek's argument about less than nothing is that less than nothing is the process by which the subject, as the purveyor of subjective reason, becomes the operator who stages the negation of negation through which retroactively essence or the void becomes essence i.e. Zizek's ontology that every universal is marked by a fundamental antagonism or difference which appears to undermine it and yet nevertheless completes it, is the subject. The subject is this gap that cuts across the universal, which appears to undermine it, the Kantian problem, and yet which nevertheless, against the backdrop of its own impossibility, creates the foundations through which the purity of substance or the universal can be conceptualized in the first place. This means that the subject radically breaks the notion of the universal and yet nevertheless closes it. Paradoxically, it closes it by extending it, by making it never ending, never closing. Or the object of the Lacanian objet petit a, the logic of the objet a by which we go from desire to drive. From the idealist position of the ideal universal as the ideal object of desire to the materialist position of the ideal as the staging of the impossible object, the never-ending recurring rotation of lack. Therefore, my friends, Zizek's less than nothing is his means of using the logic of the Lacanian ontology, which is the logic of the objet a, to stage a materialist rereading of the Hegelian dialectic by which the subject is the operator of the void or essence's negation of negation. Hence, Zizek combines the Zizekian ontology with the Hegelian one, with the materialist one, and the Lacanian one. That is my sincere attempt to break this idea down into as simple terms as possible in under 10 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about these ideas, please consider downloading my lectures and my recurring ebook subscription on Patreon. Until then, I will see you tomorrow.